back with your feet. That's it. Great. Let's get that anger, angry face. Screaming. Face towards me. How I work is probably not like how anybody else works. Chin up, chin up. Great. Yeah. And the way I do it is constantly evolving. Just like the way it's coming out straight. Oh, that's okay. What goes on in the studio is, 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 is collaboration. You know, I'm not micromanaging everything. I am definitely directing everything. And higher with the feather, yeah. A little bend in your elbow. And the entire process, it's like I've grown, you know, four extra sets of hands. It was time to kind of really make history paintings that put the emphasis on indigenous stories to really authorize these events that are still happening. Colonization is alive and well. When you see people standing up to protest a pipeline, that's a very visible and often sometimes violent, those are violent encounters that really show the resistance of indigenous people. We've got images here of military scenes and as I looked at these I noticed there were certain similarities compositionally in these paintings that relate to what's going on here. I'm not even necessarily trying to reproduce what I'm seeing in the painting or a mood board. It's more about a feeling. You guys like screaming like, you know, like that. Yeah. And action. That's it. Yeah. What we started doing in the studio was uh, bringing models in and photographing models, and I would stage, you know, photo shoots, posing them in, in the kinds of action scenes that I wanted. The more we can capture in this photograph, the better it is for us when we get to the painting stage, because you know I'm working with assistants, and if I, you know, I can leave things that I can fill in with my imagination, but they don't know what that is, and they might not necessarily know how to do that. So I really want to give them the best source material that I can. The photo is just a tool. It's a tool as a, you know, as if referring to a sketch or referring to a study or a watercolor. It's, it's a tool to produce the best painting possible. It's a very classical uh, process, and you know, there's, it's nothing new to use photo. I know, I like the hand in this you one. You could more. just shot her face onto that. But it's her face too. You see them both? I've been training Cindy and Laura to paint a very specific way. You know, the fact that my assistants, it's, it's kind of impossible to tell who worked on what unless they tell me. And I, I like that because that means that we're all working very well together. You know, when I matured as a painter, my intention was to actually disappear my own hand in my work. And, you know, the old masters, when they made copies of, of other old masters' paintings, that's, that was their intention as well, is that the ego wasn't in your brush stroke, that you, your work wasn't readily so identifiable on the surface. It was through the much larger sort of vision and body of work. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's kind of just like coming out through here. When they get those images, they have the confidence to know exactly what I want. And as they move through creating work, I'm constantly stepping in to say, I think that's too dark, or I think, you know, we need to adjust this. Under here, but okay. yeah, darker is good. Painting is about repainting, so I'm never really too worried if things kind of go off in one direction or in another, because I can always pull it back. That's the joy of it, and that's also the challenge of it. So this painting for me is one small part of this much larger body of work which will explore much more complex scenes. There's a very strong male-female kind of tension in this painting where the two protesters happen to be female. 
I really wanted to focus on the figures with this body of work, so that meant removing detail or at least um, obscuring it with smoke and really pull the focus to the emotion of the figures, the expression in the human faces, and the action of the figures and the violence that, that's going on in each scene. The very end stage is sometimes the most satisfying um, because that's when you really, all that work gets pulled together and you're finally able to, to realize that image that you've had in your head. Really, it's about bringing the painting together and making it really feel cohesive. You know, I do that with like glazing transparent layers at the end and I get subtle refinements in terms of the illusion of space, cooling things off, warming things up. That's good, that's really, really making those shadows pop. It's something that when you look at it from far away, it looks perfect, and then you get up close and you go, oh, that's just a, it's just a bunch of wiggles. <laughs> but that's what painting is, you know? It's just, it's wiggling a brush on a, on a canvas. When I've finished a painting, I'll just know that I've touched it just, just enough. And that's just a personal thing. I just, you just know it. <laughs>